Hey guys, Dr. Josh Ax here with Jordan Rubin. Welcome to Ancient Medicine Today. We are here live with you. And today we're going to be talking about four ways to naturally treat anemic symptoms. And Jordan, there's a lot of people that struggle with anemia. You know, if you're a person watching this and you notice that if you're a female and, and certain types during your menstrual cycle, if you're feeling very fatigued and tired, that could be a warning sign that those are some anemic symptoms. If you're a person that uh, sometimes you tend to get lightheaded or you exercise and you just feel sort of out of sorts, those can be warning signs that you have anemic symptoms. And so we're going to be talking about the best supplements, the best diet, natural treatments to help you overcome anemia here today and really boost your energy. And also, if you're watching this, hey, do us a favor, help us spread the word on how to use food as medicine. Take a minute right now and punch that share button here right now. And also, hey, let us know where you're from, the city, the state, the country. We'd love to give you a shout out right now here on Facebook Live. So Jordan, I think there's probably more people that have anemia than they think or people that struggle with not having in Chinese medicine what they would call enough chi or enough uh, you know, an, enough um, so sort of healthy blood vital their force, system. Yes. Vital force, Now, we say anemic symptoms because there are people that are not clinically anemic. So say they're hemoglobin if the normal range is 11.8, and mm -hmm. different diagnostic labs have different levels. But hemoglobin is the oxygen-carrying protein, and it's critical uh, in order to have proper hemoglobin levels that you... Uh, are eating a diet that gives you the nutrients we're going to talk about. So you might not be anemic, so you get your blood results and there's no out of ranges, but your iron's on the low end, your B12's on the low end, your hemoglobin's on the low end, your hematocrit. So you're still feeling tired and you're feeling grumpy. And I, honestly, let's make it simple. If you have brain fog or episodic depression. Mm. If you lack energy and vitality, I believe you need to listen today because it isn't just simply that condition called anemia, but if you are dealing with a lack of energy and a lack of mental focus and you're not in a good mood often, I believe you're going to learn four powerful steps to rid your body of anemic symptoms and get your life back. Yeah, as Jordan's talking about, a lot of times what people tend to do is they tend to look at these baseline numbers and say, I fall within this range, and so you know I, I, I got a medical checkup three years ago, and it didn't say I had those issues. Well, people's health, I mean, we, it can change very quickly, but more than that, you know, you can look at things like thyroid markers as a prime yes. example, liver and you know liver issues. A lot of times these things do not show up on blood work, and a lot of the tests we're running today aren't right either. Right, I mean, they're old, and you're sub, it's that subclinical hypothyroid. In fact, yes. when we do thyroid programs, which are always popular, the vast majority of people who are dealing with thyroid issues are not out of the range mm. clinically. So that's subclinical hypothyroid and subclinical anemic symptoms. It means that you're not out of range, but you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, Jordan, I know that there's a lot of people watching, especially, again, if you're a female, and during during your cycle, if you're getting to the point where you're feeling really just lightheaded and not well, that can be a sign that you need to nourish your blood. That's something we're going to talk about today. And a lot of athletes, Jordan, I remember training years ago when I was training for triathlons, and sometimes I would stand up and I would get lightheaded right. when I stood up, and I started following a diet and started getting certain foods that nourish my blood, and I noticed a difference. So some Absolutely. of these foods can even help athletes, they can help, uh, help moms. So we'll jump in now and talk about the four steps to overcome anemic symptoms. So Jordan here, number one, something I love is liver. And Go for the gusto right off. Yeah, the going right for it. So liver is really the ultimate blood builder in my book. You know, liver is used in Chinese medicine for building the blood, very high in B vitamins. In fact, Jordan, if you look at a chart, you and I have both seen this, when you're comparing red meat and spinach and kale and liver, in terms of their B vitamin content, I mean, liver, we're talking 10 times more vitamin B12, much more iron, really, really high levels of these nutrients that help nourish the blood. So these Absolutely. are Absolutely. Liver is tremendous. <clears throat> it's not something that people enjoy because it's got that astringent flavor, but it's got omega-3s. It's got loads of vitamin A, B12, iron, zinc, and B6. It's loaded. So if you can consume liver, and we uh, pictured there is B for calves liver, but if you can get chicken liver, which tastes a little more mild. Venison liver is amazing if you have access to that lamb liver. But if you know that you lack energy and you sort of lack that mental 
vitality, go for some liver. Absolutely. I want to give you guys a shout out who are watching right now, people from all over the world. We've got Ken Terry Young watching from <clears throat> Halifax, Canada. Hey, Ken Terry, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, Keisha Shelton from Greenville, Kentucky. We've got uh, Jane uh, Ronka watching from Buffalo, New York. Uh, Trisha Navarro says, love me some liver. Pat Howard uh, says hi from Branscombe, California. And we have Don Caffey watching from Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. And um, <laughs> a what? funny comment here. Yeah, I'll go and say far, it. Farva beans and a cheap Chianti. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we've Silence got uh, land, Helga definitely. says hi from hung uh, Hungary. And Kathy says hi from Austin, Texas. And Fegan yes, uh, Yasiyan is watching from London, England. Hey, thanks, guys, for joining us here today. Jordan, one of the questions I often get about liver consumption, because one of the comments here was, I'm sickened. Um, because, you know, some people have an affinity towards meat products and animal products, but some people don't understand that if your liver is responsible for detoxification, is, is that good to eat because of right. that? Well, I believe if you consume liver from animals that are raised healthfully, it's great. And I can't explain exactly why. Liver is more of a pass-through. But if yes. an animal eats a diet that's only pasture, they're not going to have a bunch of issues. And in fact, when you slaughter an animal, and I know some of you are grossed out, but you can tell if there's liver abnormalities. Mm -hmm. In fact, the USDA would not allow that to be slaughtered. I'm not a big advocate of the USDA, but they do have some standards. But liver from healthy animals is really healthy. It's been part of the Gerson cancer protocol. Yes. It's part of the William Donald Kelly cancer protocol. It's it's really good. And I admittedly don't eat a lot of it. You can find some liver supplements, but I know that it's healthy. And let, let now liver and animal meats have a form of iron, because oftentimes anemia comes with iron deficiency that is called heme iron, which is much more absorbable. But we're going to get into a powerful iron-boosting sticky substance called blackstrap molasses. Now, blackstrap molasses has non-heme iron and can be difficult to digest, but if you're on a plant-based diet or hate liver, that is a way to get some nutrients. Yeah. But if you consume a lot of it, it can cause some malabsorption issues. But blackstrap molasses was so popular in the 80s as a health oh, supplement. Big time. Another one here is brewer's yeast. Now, I will say of all the things on here, um, I, I like liver and blackstrap molasses better than brew, brewer's yeast in terms of building up these stores. But brew, brewer's yeast is something that a lot of vegans will use uh, to get more B vitamins in their diet. And so, you know, it's a, it's a really good option. So brewer's yeast, uh, one of nature's uh, great B vitamins that you can be consuming on a regular basis. These are old school supplements. Oh, old if school. you look at the top three, so some of the popular supplements in the 70s and 80s, Liver, desiccated liver, that sounds yeah. bad as it is, but it's just dried, defatted liver. Blackstrap molasses and brewer's yeast, that's like three of the five health food products oh, yeah. that were there. And speaking of old school, bone broth. Now, while bone broth doesn't have iron, it doesn't have B12, it doesn't have B6 or folate, bone broth is great because it nourishes the body on the cellular level. Serum-soluble nutrition, bathing your body in proteins, minerals, and what's called glycosaminoglycan. Mm. So bone broth is a great way to boost your body and make you more functional, which is real important if you've got mind and muscle deficiencies. Awesome. Getting some comments here. Diana Armstrong, Diane Armstrong says, liver and onions and liver and beans are wonderful. Uh, Melinda said, is fried liver okay? It depends on what you fry it in. If you're frying it in a little bit of coconut oil or ghee or uh, something like that, going to be a much better option that way. All right, let's jump in here into phase number two here. Here's some oh, other wow. foods to consume. Here we go. Vitamin C rich foods. Now, one of the things that's important is you really work to increase um, your, uh, your iron absorption. There are other things you need. Vitamin C is a crucial vitamin that supports iron absorption. And I'd say, Jordan, that's as much of a problem as anything oh, is, is absorption. It's probably the bigger problem is making sure you're absorbing. And that's really where this one and the last one we'll talk about really come into play. Also, you know, a lot of people that have anemia, Jordan, you and I know this, is that sometimes it can be caused by not necessarily. Iron deficiency isn't the root cause. It can be vitamin B12, can be yep. folate, different B6. Different forms of, of, of anemia. Yeah. So many different forms of anemia. So getting more vitamin C rich foods. Some of our favorites include most fruits are going to be higher in vitamin C. Mangoes are fantastic. 
any type of citrus, orange, grapefruit, lemons, limes are great as well. And then some vegetables, uh, bell peppers, one of the most vitamin C rich foods on the planet, as well as broccoli is also absolutely great. And you can see a picture here, I believe this is of guava, uh, guava. another guava. vitamin C rich superfood. So get more vitamin C rich foods. Guava was a good choice for the slide and very yummy. Uh, green yeah. leafy vegetables are a rich source of iron and also chlorophyll. Now, without making Tommy Boy jokes, chlorophyll, <laughs> borophyll, I hope you're still watching and excited. But green leafies contain chlorophyll. It's a pigment that makes vegetables green. Yeah. Chlorophyll is almost identical to hemoglobin, mm. which is the oxygen-carrying protein in the body, with the exception hemoglobin has iron, Chlorophyll has magnesium. So mm. while this is still a plant source of iron, uh, which is green leafy vegetables, and chlorophyll, it is a great way to help those feelings or uh, symptoms of uh, mental sort of dullness and energy dullness, which coincide with anemia. And women are much more likely to have anemic symptoms than men because they have their monthly menstrual cycle. Yeah. So uh, premenopausal women will deal with anemic symptoms much more than others, and green leafy vegetables are a great way to cleanse the body, and the chlorophyll helps to boost energy stores. Yeah, love it. You know, one of the things Jordan and I are working on developing is a collagen-boosting diet, and part of that is consuming things that are serum-soluble. So Jordan, doing lots of green leafy vegetables is great. Doing juiced greens is really, oh, yeah. really incredible when we're talking about boosting up those iron levels. So juice spinach, juice kale, especially parsley is fantastic for this. Yes. Cilantro, and then probably one of my favorites, Jordan, would be juiced beet greens oh, yeah. and oh, beets yeah. themselves. Beets in general are a great source of plant-based iron and blood boosting. So before I turn probiotics over to you, you mentioned that it's not an issue necessarily of a lack of iron, it could be absorption. So mm. we see people with gluten intolerance yep. have iron issues. People that consume a lot of soy don't digest uh, iron as easily because it can block the absorption. But probiotics, as good as they are for so many things, when probiotics come from soil-based organisms, mm. they produce lactoferrin in the body. And lactoferrin is an iron binding protein. Wow. Now here's the thing. Dietary iron is good if you absorb it, but it's bad because it can feed microbes. That's why people, when they take iron supplements, they get constipated because it imbalances your gut yeah. with various iron gluconates and, and, and citrate, etc. So probiotics help create lactoferrin, iron binding protein, in the body, and we know they do other things too. Awesome, and this is just another side note as well, but if you think about this, why are sprouted foods good? I mean, there are a lot of people today, especially in the paleo community, will talk about consuming too many phytates and phytic acid, not being able to absorb the nutrients, so that's a completely separate note here uh, as well. But again, sprouted foods tend to be more easily absorbed if you are gonna consume grain products. But the big thing here is Jordan's talking about with probiotics. We've both said this in many lectures that we've taught, you aren't what you eat, you are what you digest. It is so important that we get our digestive tract healthy, and you do that by consuming many of the foods we've talked about, foods to where your body doesn't have to work. Serum soluble nutrients, bone broth, herbal teas, veggie juices. These things are easy on the body, but most importantly, getting more probiotics. As Jordan mentioned, soil-based probiotics. You can get these in food form, sauerkraut, kimchi, kvass, coconut kefir, goats or sheep milk or A2 cow kefir, amasi and lassi, raw cheeses, natto, miso. There are lots of good options out there when it comes to getting more probiotic rich foods in your diet, but I'd also highly recommend taking a probiotic supplement. And when you're buying a probiotic supplement, look for an SBO that stands for soil-based organism probiotic supplement with species, species such as Lactobacillus um, plantarum is good, but especially the bacillus species, bacillus subtilis, bacillus coagulans, bacillus clausi. So look for those. So Jordan, yep. let's jump in here to step two. And also, hey, do us a favor. Whoa. There are so many people today struggling with their health. They need to know this information. Take a minute right now and punch that share button for us and the like button. Let's help spread the word. Food is medicine. Because you know what, Jordan, a lot of people are going to doctors, even getting put on medications or hard to digest iron supplements that yeah. are actually causing side effects rather than doing this. Absolutely. This is great for anyone who wants to boost energy or their brain. So here's what not to consume. Now listen, um, we believe that chocolate is beneficial. We do. Dark chocolate, in fact, 
Yesterday, I had a chocolate that was 88% cacao. It's even high in fiber, but chocolate can interfere with iron absorption. We'll yep. leave it at that. I don't want to disappoint people, uh, but anyway. Um, next, this is a big one. How many people thought in the 80s and 90s that bran was the greatest thing oh. since, well, sprouted bread? Anyway, um, bran, particularly bran from wheat, is loaded with gluten and helps to deter the body from absorbing minerals. So if you're somebody who has just been consuming bran or you're consuming a cereal with wheat bran, I would just get off of it. It's not going to yeah. help you. It's actually in many ways harming. And we'll say this, hey, you want to get a replacement for fiber, do tiger nuts, great replacement. Yeah, tiger nuts is a great replacement. Sounds really cool. It'll uh, play well with your friends. It's neither <laughs> from a tiger nor is it a nut, but it is a high uh, prebiotic <laughs> fiber and it's really, really cool. Conventional dairy, this is another one. People think dairy um, does a body good, but dairy can harm your ability to absorb certain nutrients because of the way it's been pasteurized and homogenized. Mm, good points. Next one here is soda, stating the obvious here. And I want to mention something that I noticed about most of these foods. Now, bran isn't necessarily included in there, but chocolate in larger amounts, conventional dairy and soda, those are actually really hard on the liver. And the liver actually plays a big yes. role when it comes to uh, blood deficiencies or even spleen deficiencies, which is part of Chinese medicine. But high fructose corn syrup is one of the worst things you can ever consume. And Jordan, another principle of Chinese medicine is if you have these blood-related issues, you typically want to work on warming the body. Yes. And ice-cold soda with corn syrup and as cold as it is one of the worst things you could do to wreck your liver and your spleen and overall right. your or, blood. Or brand cereal, chocolate flavor with conventional dairy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's horrible. All three energy sapping, brine sa uh, brain sapping breakfast. We want to avoid those. Now, now, this is another thing. Now, we believe coffee, organic, and tea is amazing, but caffeinated foods can alter your iron absorption and central nervous system stimulation is not ideal for someone with anemic symptoms. Mm -hmm. The average person could do well to drink dark coffee uh, as well as black tea as long as it's organic, but in this case you want to avoid it. And you mentioned this earlier, cold foods. Now I don't know why, uh, Josh, but I love cold foods. My wife loves warm foods. I literally, when I was a kid, I think I made these homemade popsicles with you know, juicy juice. Yeah. <laughs> juicy juice, really? And um, anyway, I would eat 10 of them a day, 20 of them a day. I love cold foods. My son Joshua loves oh, yeah. cold foods. But if you talk to a Chinese herbalist, very bad. You are, well, that was a terrible, that was like more like a Pakistani accent. If you talk to a Pakistani herbalist, anyway, they do not believe cold foods are good. So I stopped drinking ice water, started drinking room temperature water because I was told that your digestive system has to work to bring the cold to warm. Yeah. So if your body's 98.6, why mess around with cold foods? And that can sap your energy. Yeah, absolutely. Number three here. Here we go. Let's talk about some of the things to start to remedy this. You can take supplements. I'm going to have Jordan talk about iron more. But Jordan, one of the issues today is there are people that go out and take iron supplements. You kind of already touched on this. But they are noticing, and, and I've actually worked with patients with this too. When they took an iron supplement, they would cause the stomach oh, yeah. cramping absolutely. and pain. And, and other digestive symptoms. Absolutely. So what we want to do with iron is consume iron in a source that is either a fermented mineral mm. or an enzyme-activated mm. mineral. There's been clinical studies that those irons are more gentle. And B12, same thing. I mean, people, a lot of people are very much heaven-bent on methylcobalamin. And I'm not saying that yeah. people are not having issues with methylation, but when I look for B12, I look for fermented B12, utilizing a probiotic or a beneficial yeast. It's so much more absorbable. Yep. And again, you can get these in food, but that's where we go. And then folate, you can get from organic sources in organic multis. And folate is important, certainly for uh, energy, but it's also really important for your heart, for proper homocysteine levels, for the fetal development yep. in, in a pregnant women. So really, really great. And you mentioned this earlier. Why is vitamin C good? Yeah, vitamin C is important, again, for absorption of iron itself. So again, getting vitamin C. Now, vitamin C, similar thing. You want to get it in a whole food form. When you're, just a few tips here. When you're buying one of these supplements, flip over the bottle. Number one, look, is it certified organic? When you're buying a B-complex vitamin, 
Look for a B complex that has B12 and folate, but that's certified organic, okay? So it's organic, also it's food-based. You look at the back, it contains things like spinach and parsley and nutrients that are actually high in the B vitamins themselves have probiotics and nutrients that support absorption. Similar thing with vitamin C. They should be, On the label, we should be seeing things like oranges and acerola cherry and kiwi and other vitamin C rich superfoods. Amla berry or Indian gooseberry mm -hmm. is a great source of vitamin C like compounds as well. All right, now let's absolutely bust this out. You know, we've got a little error on our, on our, uh, uh, screen today. So you'll have to displace where it says vertigo up there. You might be thinking, gosh, am I dizzy? But <laughs> these, these essential oils are actually really, really good for building your blood. And it starts with, so you said warming cinnamon is right where it's at. Cinnamon and ginger are two of the most warming herbs. Yeah. Actually, I've been experimenting. You know how there's a popular sort of pain reliever that has hot and cold and shacks the spokesperson. I won't mention the name, mm -hmm. but I took peppermint oil and ginger and put it on my knee and it was this awesome like cold and hot sensation. Uh, oh, Ginger's yeah. warming. It is really awesome. Oh yeah, love Thermogenic. it. Thermogenic. So as Jordan's talking about here within Chinese medicine, simmer, cinnamon and ginger, both very warming to the body, also stabilize insulin and blood sugar, which can benefit um, overall iron levels as well. If someone has continually sp spiking blood glucose levels, can cause issues. And then grapefruit and lemon, very high in the compounds d -limonene. Now, if you're looking at the fat-soluble therapeutic compound that's found there, we're going to look at those citrus oils in the peel, and they're very bitter in nature. So remember that. Liver, when you taste liver, it is super, super bitter. When we talk about other herbs that nourish specifically the liver as well as the spleen, they are um, very bitter in nature. So that's why when you look at lemon and grapefruit peel essential oil, they're very good because they're bitter in nature, which tends to also help dry up, air, dry up excess mucus in the body, rid the body of bad microbes like candida, which can interfere with absorption. So that's why those are beneficial there as well. And then peppermint oil also very, very good because of how it supports digestion. All right, well, this was a big program today. And remember, Ancient Medicine Today, brought to you by DrAxe.com, exists to show you how to use food as medicine, herbs as medicine, oil as medicine, supplements as medicine. We're here every weekday, 10.30 a.m. Central Time. And if you're loving this information, if you want to unlock the health of your brain and your energy, tell us that you like it. Share with us some of these tips that you have followed to gain energy and mental clarity, good mood and focus. And also please punch that share button. Make sure that people around the world know that they can boost their energy and their brain by reversing these anemic symptoms. I think tens of millions of people, particularly women who are of reproductive age, yeah. deal with subclinical anemia or anemic symptoms. And here's what we want to consume. Liver. Yes, liver. <laughs> you got to do it. Blackstrap molasses and brewer's yeast, good sources of B vitamins and iron. Bone broth, bathe your body in serum-soluble nutrition. Vitamin C-rich foods such as citrus, vegetables such as peppers and broccoli help you absorb more iron. Green leafy vegetables have chlorophyll. That's not borophyll, but the chlorophyll mm -hmm. acts similarly to hemoglobin in the body and probiotics from soil-based organisms create lactoferrin, which helps bind iron. And what do we want to avoid? Yeah, stay away from number one. I know we don't like to hear this, but chocolate, especially in excess, uh, brand, conventional dairy products, soda, ice cold drinks, black coffee, black tea, and cold food, some of the big things you want to stay away from. And when it comes to supplements, we want to consume fermented or enzyme-activated iron. Vitamin B12, folic acid or folate, and vitamin C, those nutrients will help build your blood, and essential oils are awesome too. Yeah, best essential oils, cinnamon oil, grapefruit oil, ginger oil, lemon, and peppermint, some of the most beneficial when it comes to warming the body, giving it those bitter compounds that can help overcome anemia. So guys, we hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been Jordan Rubin and myself, Dr. Josh Axe, talking about the four steps to naturally treat anemia and anemic symptoms. Guys, we'll be back tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Central Time with more Ancient Medicine Today.